guys, me, Kevin Smith. Welcome to the IMDb studio at Acura Festival Village. And look, it's the director and cast of The Nest. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, take us in, Captain. Tell us what The Nest is about. Uh, the Nest is a family drama that follows uh, Rory, played by Jude. He's a entrepreneur um, living in America. He wakes his family up one day and tells them that he has a business opportunity uh, that will take him back to London and that they're going to move. Um, they move to England and uh, the promise of this lucrative new life begins to unravel and it forces the family to confront some of the truths lying beneath the surface of their dynamic. And where does it come from? Where would you pull it from? Um, I, I moved between England and the US as a kid and I think that uh, at the time, it was late 80s, early 90s. It which was, one to which? Uh, both ways, back and forth. So, really? so yeah, and then, and then again as an adult. Where were the formative years spent? Uh, like uh, friends and, and, and uh, grade both. school? Both. And... I was in England until 11 and then moved to New York. And, That's fascinating. Yeah. What was it like to be a kid from two worlds at that point? Um, Hard enough to be a kid in school, period, let alone... Yeah, I definitely, uh, you know, don't feel English or American. Um, that would make you Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I, and I'm, and I was born in Canada, <laughs> but I never there lived is. there. So, uh, yeah. A man so, with no country. Exactly. Lord, yeah. Sure. So wait. So then, am I reading this correctly? You got Jude Law to play you, essentially. <laughs> no. Um, <is> it, <laughs> um, it's a period piece. It is. Yes. Set in the eighties. Set in nineteen eighty-six. Yeah. Why? Why the eighties? I <laughs> great yeah, suits. Totally great outfits. <laughs> well, a, a part of it was that, that uh, I think in England and American culture are much more seamless nowadays. You travel between the two countries; it doesn't feel very different. But at the time, it was a very stark contrast. And I remember a real atmosphere change between the two places when I moved. And I, I think that that um, sort of hung in the background for me as mm. a as a haunting backdrop. Um, so I traced it back to 1986 because there's a, um, a business element that's in the backdrop of Jude's storyline, which is um, he's, he's going to London to pursue um, this business opportunity, which uh, at the time was the height of deregulation, mm -hmm. um, something called the Big Bang, referred to as the Big Bang in London at the time, where the markets opened up to um, companies from all over the world. And so he goes big there. Opportunity. Yeah, big it. opportunity. And, and as, as, a, he, as a Brit living in America, he goes there with this... Um, sort of idea that he's perfectly positioned to uh, be in the middle of that transition, mm. that business transition in, in London at that time. What, um, what is one, <clears throat> I mean, were you even born in the 80s? You look like you're 12, how old are <laughs> I you? I was. Were you a yeah. kid of the 80s? Uh, do you pull from that time or do you have to research from it? Um, uh, it? Both, yeah. yeah. I mean, a, a lot of research went into this just to, just to get the texture of the world and the details in the business world. Um, and yeah, and, 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 then, and then the textural stuff and the, you know, things like that came from memory and, and, and just remembering how certain things feel uh, living in England at that time or, or, you know, in the contrast to America. Fascinating. Uh, Captain, you, I, for, for the first 10 years of my marriage, I saw you every night before I went to sleep because we would watch the talented Mr. Ripley. <laughs> It was like our favorite movie, me and my wife and stuff. So Dickie Greenleaf was always there as I went to sleep, man. So it's so weird to see you in person because I'm used to seeing you <laughs> when I was 24. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you were a kid. Yeah, I'm like, you aged. What happened? <laughs> you ain't Dickie no more. <laughs> the, um, you are a man who refuses to play a character who lives in the current moment. You're always playing period piece. Even now, you're in the 80s. Captain Marvel, you were in the 90s. Yeah, Sherlock yes. Holmes, you're at yeah, another period yeah. and stuff like that. I thought of that. Are you afraid of the present? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in it. <laughs> that's <that's escaped> it. <laughs> Maybe why that's why. What was it like taking on this role? And have you ever done uh, 80s go-go? Sadly not. Well, I have now. Uh, taking on this role was, first of all, any role that offers uh, this kind of depth and insight into... Uh, the, the relationships that we all understand, whether it's being a child, being, well, or rather as a parent, that I can also understand being a parent, the interrelationship in a marriage, uh, uh, family dynamics is so rich. It's such a sort of, there's such potential for drama and such potential for, for, for actors in that to create. 
uh, that I kind of jumped in uh, very uh, enthusiastically. And then added to that was this, di this quality that Rory has where I had to believe, you know, he, he does everything with the best intention. Um, at a time when he, the promises are, are are sometimes beyond what the reality is. So it was playing someone who was both the sort of person you would follow, but then also showing the cracks underneath the veneer, you know, showing the, uh, the, the, human, the, the human foibles underneath the sort of um, glamour, I suppose, of the 80s. It was a it was a brilliant part to play, uh, um, mostly because I got to work. You know, collaboration is such a huge part of this job, and working with a writer director who was uh, uh, first of all so clear, but also so forthcoming to involve all of us. And um, and I think because at the heart it's it, it's a family drama, and it's done very measuredly. It's not about the falling apart. It's not about the divorce. It's not about any of that. It's about how a family, or why we why we stick together as families with all the dramas that ensue, it was important that there was a family feel and that, that was uh, very much at the, at the center of the, the making of it, the experience of it. Kids, this is not your first Sundance for either of you. Both been up here before? No, I'm, I'm a baby, I'm new. First time? Yeah. What do you think of the fest? Um, it's wild. It is kind of crazy. Yeah, it's pretty great. It's like Whoville out here. <laughs> you were know. the first person that compared it to Whoville. Ron Howard was here the other day. You would have made him cry with that reference. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Um, you've been up here before, though, for what, Captain Fantastic? This is my third time. Third time? Look at you. And What are you, like nine? <laughs> my God, third time <laughs> as a veteran. What is it like coming up here as an actor? I mean, I just love Sundance so much. I mean, I think it's great, and I think all the movies are so interesting. And like, I like indie movies like a bunch, and I feel like they all have these very powerful messages to say. So I'm very proud to be able to come here and like support a movie that I think I believe in and has such a powerful message. And so it's really fun. Now, you kids, neither of you were alive in the '80s. Yeah. How do you play kids in the '80s? Do you do research, or you're like they're kids today? We just wore funny clothes. Yeah, I mean, I think kids. I mean, aside from the fact that we have like, you know, computers in our pockets now and all that, we grew up with so much technology, which was kind of an amazing part of being on the set was that we didn't have phones and we didn't like that wasn't an element of this. There was no figuring out how to put the texting on the screen, right. you know, so it was like kind of a more present feeling. Um, but essentially, you know, like teenagers are teenagers. They want to they want to run around and explore and carve their own freedom and like find their own path and individuality. And I think that doesn't change. So for me. I mean, I, you know, I'm still, I'm still in that phase, so it's, it was right on the mark. That's right. You're like, I'm not too far from being a <laughs> yeah, team, bro. no. What about you, Kat? Um, I mean, I've been able, to, I've been lucky, and I've been able to play a couple movies that are set, like, in period times. Like, right before this, I filmed a movie set in the 70s, and then a couple before that, I filmed a movie set in the 1800s. And it's just really fun to be able to kind of think what they would think about in that time and, like, kind of put yourself in their shoes. And it's so much different. And... Like Una said, like we didn't have any of the technology to worry about when we were filming this, and I don't think there was even like service in the place we were at. Like it was yeah. hard to like even like be part of that because we were so isolated in this right. house. So easy to be part of the world too when you're right. cut off from that technology. Um, you guys have a bunch of credits and stuff, but this guy has a, like you should see his IMDb. It just goes on and on and on. Did you learn anything hanging out with uh, Cinematic Dad? Uh. <laughs> yeah, I remember at one what point I was like, <laughs> I was like Jude. Because I come from a theater background, I have a BFA in theater, I went to theater school, so this was like my first time on a feature film set, and I was like, Jude, what do you do when you don't get another 50 chances to do it? Like, you know, in theater, you do, you do it every night, if, you don't, if it doesn't work out one night, you go, all right, well, we'll try again tomorrow. But, and I was like, what do you do when you, when you feel like maybe you didn't nail it or whatever? And Jude was like, you know, I, I still go home and like, say the words from a scene I just did that I'll never do again, but, like you gotta let it go and and trust that it worked and trust that you're enough so that was like a really really important pearl of wisdom that you planted that i carried with me going forward useful yeah. info He's yeah. saying that and eat as much lunch as you can yeah. free. <laughs> free food free and lunch. keep the clothes um i mean it was just great to be able to hang out with jude i mean he never felt like he was above us he was just always part and charming and nice and being able to just hang out with us which was so great um I think one of the most interesting things is how such a likable person as Jude could play such an unlikable person as Rory. Excellent <laughs> point, man. Yeah. He's yes. always playing pricks, right? Like, <laughs> but in real life, he seems like a real nice guy. Yeah. 
<laughs> are you going to defend Rory, G? I am. I am. I don't know. He he is. Uh, he's a complicated guy, but I I don't know. I don't know that he's. Well, that's just come from his son. I'm not sure how. <laughs> what am I going to say? No, he's a nice guy. He loves you. Rory loves you, man. Um, he's he's slightly more multifaceted than just being a prick. Right, right, right. I he's hope. got a lot going on. <laughs>